In today's video, I am participating in the Useful DIY Challenge hosted by Moomda from Moomda's Life Handmade and Donna by Creative by Nature. In this challenge, we are to create something using paper. This is what you're going to need for this uh, paper craft. Some uh, wrapping paper, like butcher paper, type of wrapping paper, tape, scissors, hot glue, a sharpie marker, a ruler, a sur surface for measuring and cutting, an old book, and then a template with whatever saying you want to put on. Some little decorative doodads, whatever you might have, a pencil. You're also going to need a piece of scrap cardboard and a Christmas pick. And some twigs out of your yard. First thing you wanna do is figure out what size a uh, piece of paper you want for your banner and you want it to be longer than what you want. You want it to be a couple of inches longer than what you want because you're going to be rolling it at the top and the bottom uh, because it's a scroll. Um, let me go ahead and, and get this cut out to the size I want. I'm going to have to cut a little extra off because they put tape on this. Um, so once I get the pieces figured out and cut out, um, I'll bring you back because it'd just be boring for you to watch. And your scrolls will all be your size, whatever size you want them to be. So I'll be back. I have my butcher paper cut to approximately, to approximately the size that I want. It might be a little bit big. Um, but we will we can adjust that as we go. I don't think I've said yet what my project is actually going to be. I am making some Christmas decor um, scrolls uh, to hang on the wall. I'm going to be doing two different styles. So the first style is where I just write a saying on the scroll. And what I chose to to write on this scroll is O Come Let Us Adore Him and I just chose a font I liked on my computer and I printed this out and I'll show you how to trace this on to the butcher paper. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to weigh the um, corners of my paper down with just anything around the house you can find. I've got these coasters um, that we always have on the table because I'm going to need a flat surface. I'm going to need this to be a flat surface to work on and it just keeps wanting to curl up on me. And then you're going to take your, um, if you have like a Cricut machine, this would be so much easier, but I don't and I probably never will have one. So what you need to do is just cut each of these letters, out, or not letters, but words out Olivia's making cookies if you hear her the mixer going. So you just kind of cut it down to a manageable size and then you're going to place it on the um, butcher paper. And I can kind of tell right now that I think my butcher paper is too big. This was the biggest font I could get on my print on my computer. So So that, I like the way that looks there, but I do think that I need to take probably a couple of inches off, like an inch off of each side, uh, because 
I think there's just too much gap here. The length from top to bottom doesn't really matter that much because like I said, you're gonna, you're gonna roll it up, but the width does matter. So I think I am gonna go ahead and take an inch off of each side or you know, two inches off of one side and then readjust the uh, wording. So I'll bring you back after I have my paper trimmed down. So there, I do like that. I like that better. So I'm going to take I'm going to take a little bit of this scotch tape, and I'm just going to um, carefully, you know, tack these down without putting a whole lot of tape actually on the butcher paper. But I do want them to stay in place. So that I can easily put them back in the right place. And then the way that you make these into a transfer, and I'm sure you've seen this trick before, you take a pencil and you flip your paper over and you can see the design through the back and you just scribble lead over that um, image. Then you take your image that you had it have uh, scribbled on the back and you place it where you want it. And I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of, and I'm going to go ahead and put a little dab of tape on here. hold it in place, and then you just trace around the letter. And you do that for all of those. Once you have all of the um, letters traced, then that's when you take your Sharpie marker. I have this Sharpie marker and then I have this uh, calligraphy pen because it has a finer tip to get into the small spaces. And then you just trace around and fill in your letters with the, with the black Sharpie. all of your writing done, then this is when you're gonna use your piece of cardboard and you're going to go ahead and glue the cardboard to the back just where the writing is at because otherwise your paper will just roll up on you. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put, I think I'm gonna do it this way. Turn this over so I can see what I'm doing and then just glue this cardboard right to the back of this with your hot glue gun. And what you wanna do is turn it back over and then of course roll your scroll up as far as you want it 
and then just take a little piece of scotch tape and kind of go in where you're not going to be able to see it kind of on the back inside do that on both sides I'm going to put a little bit more hot glue at the bottom here on this cardboard that's sticking out. So that your scroll stays where you want it to, then you're going to want to put a little dab of hot glue right in the middle. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. And just hold it there. And then you can put it some on the end as well. Just kind of squirt it in there. And then that way it'll stay. And then you're going to do the same thing to the top. Okay, so there you have your scroll, but we're not done yet. I want to decorate this up a little bit with this Christmas sprig. It. Bend it a little bit. And if it sticks over the top a little bit, that's okay, but kind of kind of want it like that. I'm gonna go ahead and put some hot glue on there. Hold it in place till it dries. Then I made this bow out of just a piece of scrap ribbon that I had, and I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue that at the bottom of the Christmas sprig. To hang this, I'm going to use this jute twine. I'm gonna thread it through that top loop and then uh, hang it. But I'm not gonna cut this and, and do that until I'm ready to hang it on the wall so that I know how much um, twine I want to use. This is scroll number one. So now let me show you what I'm going to do with the next scroll. For this scroll, this is where you're going to use your book pages. The more yellowed the book pages, the better. And if you have old sheet music, that would even be better. But I'm going to take them in groups of three. I'm going to have three sheets this just the size of the book I'm not going to cut them at all and then I'm going to cut them down in half inch increments three three of each size and hopefully I'm making sense I measured off a half an inch on this one and I'm just going to go ahead and cut that off so we'll have three the full size, three a half an inch smaller. And then I have three that are an inch smaller. And then we're gonna do three more that are an inch and a half smaller. And then we will see where we're at when we get to that point. So then you're gonna start with your biggest ones and you're gonna decide which side you want to be facing to be showing and I don't want any color so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use this side I'm gonna use the other side so you're just gonna go ahead and roll these into tubes try to make them pretty tight and then just take a piece of tape and tape this tube shut so you do the same thing with all of the papers that you have cut. I found that if you roll it onto a pencil, it makes the, the roll tighter. You're able to keep it tighter. 
just getting that initial roll, which is a little bit challenging because these papers don't want to roll. And then the pencil falls right out. And if you can go ahead and tape it, and you can see that this one's a lot tighter than the first one I did. I am gonna go ahead and keep this one though. Or maybe I won't. I'm gonna go ahead and roll a third one, a different one on the pencil because I do like the way that that works. It makes it so much tighter. And that's the, um, that's the effect I want for this is to have really tight rolls. And like I said, getting that initial roll is the challenging part. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the next size and roll those. And if you don't know what I'm doing, I'm gonna make a Christmas tree shape. So they need to continually, gradually get smaller up to the top. And I'm just starting out with increments of three because I'm not sure how many I'm actually going to need. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of these rolls done smaller sizes and I started out with three if, if you remember but I decided that I'd just do two two of each size until I got up to about here and then I just started doing one of each size so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to line them up on the um, butcher paper and then hot glue them in place with the seam side down See the seam side and then down. paper rolls glued down. Now I'm going to kind of decorate the tree. So for the top of the tree, for the star, I'm going to put this um, snowflake. And I can't decide if I want to put it actually on. Yeah, I think I want to put it actually on the paper instead of because it would be too low. Unless what I could do is do another paper roll. I'm just kind of winging this. Do another paper roll real quick. Tape it. And then put it this way on the top of the tree and then I can hook the star onto it. Yeah, that's what I'll do. And then inside this little uh, thing, I have an assortment of confetti and there's snowflake shaped confetti. And so I'm just going to hot glue a few of these on here and there. Now I've got white snowflakes, and I've also got these blue snowflakes, but I think I'm just gonna go with the white ones. So I'm trying to keep this kind of like a farmhouse looking project.
And then for the trunk of the tree, I'm just gonna take a piece of this twig and try to break off a, um, straight piece without making too big of a mess. <laughs> And then I'm going to go ahead and glue that to the bottom of the of the uh, the bottom of this. what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one more. I had an extra one of these and I'm going to go ahead and cut it in half. And then glue it on either side of the trunk. That just seems like the trunk's just a little bit too long. Since I added that extra thing, I'm going to put one more snowflake. Over here. Okay, so there's that. Here I have another just scrap piece of cardboard that I am going to glue on the back of here just to reinforce the back of this um, design like I did with the other one that I made. And then I'm gonna go ahead and roll up the bottom and the top just like I did the other one. Well, they're down here in my family room. I have these two pillars on either side. This is because this is a basement and inside these little walls are the posts that keep the, the house from falling into the basement. So when we finished our basement, um, my husband built these little tiny walls um, just to give me a little extra space to, dec to decorate. So I thought that was sweet of him. But the lighting down in my basement is not great, so I'm hoping you can get a good idea of what it looks like on my wall. Um, I have the tr Christmas tree one over here with these this little um, vase holder that I made. I change out the florals in it for the seasons. And then I have the Come Let Us Adore Him one on the other side with another vase here. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to make scrolls to decorate with out of butcher paper. It was a very inexpensive project, but it did take a lot of time, but it was fun. It was a fun time of crafting. Um, I want to thank Munda and Donna for hosting this challenge and for inviting me to join. Thanks a lot for watching, friends, and we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.